So, you need to Valheim and you want to prove yourself fit for the halls of Valhalla. Well, you wouldn't be the first. Valheim gives you limited information on what to do, where to go and what the aim is. So I'm Chemical Apes and in this beginner's guide I'm going to show you all the tips and tricks I've learned during my time playing Valheim and I'm going to prep you for defeating the first boss. Now this video is aimed for all types of beginners so some of it may be basic to some but listen carefully as it will contain more advanced tips. So the game will start by you being dropped in the middle of the sacrificial stones. Each one of the stones represents a boss. With each boss defeated, the awarded trophy would be hung up on the stone. This will then give you a power buff called the Forsaken Power. You can find each boss by finding the rune stone which will then mark it on your map. The first boss's rune stone is always here at the sacrificial stones. So go ahead and click on it. Okay, let's cover the basics. Now unlike most survival games, you won't go hungry or thirsty. To begin with, you have two core stats, health and stamina. The three blank blocks above that with the fork symbol are the buffs for the consumed food. We're going to dive into that a little bit more in detail shortly. Now the other thing that you'll notice is the skills that are popping up on the screen. This is a leveling system. Running, jumping, hitting, swimming, hacking, pretty much everything gives you XP within that skill. Now the amount gained varies for different skills. So for some weapons you may gain 1 XP for each hit you make. As you increase each level the XP required to get to the next becomes more difficult. On death the player loses 5% of the total level and progress towards the next level. At this point the no skill drain will be active for 10 minutes. Whilst this is active it will stop you losing XP. So with that in mind, let's start day one. So day one. Now you should start by picking up stones and branches for the wood with the sole aim of crafting a club, axe and armor. Now these three items will allow you to kill boars, graylings, get the wood and allow you to build a workbench. Tip one, whilst collecting the stone and branches, make sure to have a torch ready. Boars and graylings are scared of fire and they won't attack you with the torch. Killing them with the torch can make short work of them. However, just be warned that the torch does decay over time and it can't be repaired. Tip two, the torch can't be repaired so craft plenty. Killing a grayling and picking up the resins make this easy. Torches are gonna be your best friend early on. Now close to where you spawned, you would typically find two food sources. There's mushrooms and there's raspberries. Now once consumed, the food buffs will be added to the blocks in the bottom left corner. But I'll talk to you a little bit more about food and buffs more in detail shortly. Tip 3. Don't destroy the raspberry bushes. They will respawn after about 5 hours. So once you have enough wood and stone, you should craft the armor, axe and the club. With the axe, you're able to cut down the trees, gather wood and then using the armor, you should build the workbench, which will unlock a number of structures and items. Okay, so let's go ahead and build the workbench. Now just bear in mind, you won't be able to build the workbench near certain structures. It will show it in red if you can't place it. But for now, we're gonna place it in a surrounding area. It doesn't really matter where. And as you can see from here, it needs a roof. So simply build two walls behind it. And then all you need to do is put two roof ridges on top of it. Now you can actually do this with one wall and one roof, but sometimes it is a little bit hit and miss. It can be too exposed sometimes. Now once you've created it, a whole array of items and structures will pop up that you can actually craft. But for now, we're just going to craft the hole, which I'll cover shortly. Tip four, you can actually repair all items at the workbench and it doesn't cost any resource. After that, we can simply break down the walls and the workbench and get our wood back. Now from this point, we have all the core tools and weapons we need. It's time to take a look at the other food sources and find a good starting base location. So let's go. Tip five, when looking for a starting base location, it's a good idea to build not too far from the coast. The map is huge and you will eventually need to travel via ship to other islands in order to progress. Tip six, if you can find an abandoned settlement, then consider building a start base there. You just simply build a workbench near one of the buildings, then you use your hammer to deconstruct it. 
giving you a ton of wood for minimal effort. Then deconstruct the workbench, place near the, another building, and then repeat the process. Tip seven, the area of effect of the workbench is 20 meters, and this equates to 10 floor tiles. You can see the area of effect by the white circle. Tip eight, as long as you're standing inside the circle, then you can build outside of it. Okay, so once you've decided on the location, then you'll use the hoe. Now this will allow you to level the ground nicely for foundations. Tip nine, the level of the ground that the player is standing on will be used to determine if the ground is lowered or made higher when using the hoe. With the holes, you can also increase the level of the ground, but that uses two stone per hit to do so. Tip 10, using the raised ground with the hoe, you can actually extend land or even create artificial islands. Now moving on to the foundation, there are multiple methods for setting a foundation. You can have a raised foundation or build directly onto the ground, but it is important that it is a solid support or your building will fall down. So for this video, I'm just going to build a basic 4x4 at ground level. Okay, so tip 11, just be aware that you will slide down 45 degree roofs. However, you won't slide down 26 degree roofs. So it is worth considering when you're doing larger roofs. Tip 12, when you need to climb up buildings or higher places, use floor tiles. They are a lot quicker than using ladders. Okay, so now it's time to create a bed. Now, as you can see, you can claim the bed set it as a spawn point, but the bed does require a campfire in order to rest. Okay, so we need a fire. Now, the fire is a key element and it has a number of benefits, but I'll go into the benefits in a minute. Now, the two main things that you need to remember that the campfire needs are cover and ventilation. So first, let's create a fire outside. Okay, so the issue here is that the fire will go out with wind and rain. So therefore we need a roof. So let's look at placing the fire inside the house. And most importantly, the fire needs to be on solid ground or a stone foundation. Tip 13, so we can get around this. We just need to remove the wooden floor tile, then place the campfire and then place back the floor tile. However, the other issue that we've got here now is ventilation. So as you can see, the smoke builds up and you will take two HP damage every 10 seconds until you eventually die. And this effect is called the smoked effect. So let's look at another alternative. For example, I'm gonna create a classic chimney and this is gonna be one wall high. And as we know, the fire needs cover. So I'm gonna put a roof on it. Now, as you can see, the fire goes out randomly. Why? Because of ventilation. So we can solve this by increasing the height of the walls to two. Then we place a one meter pole on each corner. Then a two meter wooden beam on two sides. And this is followed by the roof ridge. 45 degree or 26 degree, it doesn't really matter. And there we go. So the benefits of the fire are, wet players can dry rapidly quicker, removes the cold effect, protects from freezing effect, and it also adds a comfort effect to the player without needing to sit. So right now you're probably thinking, comfort effect, what's that? Well, sitting near a fire or being in a shelter for 20 seconds gives a rested effect, plus, the base value of free comfort, which in turn gives health regen of 200%, stamina regen of 300%, and experience gain by 50%. Now the rested effect lasts for eight minutes with each comfort level adding a minute to that. So a bed, for example, increases the comfort by one. Tip 14, you know, to further increase comfort, all you need to do is add the furniture as you unlock them. This could be a rug or a table or chair. 
However, just bear in mind that each furniture type won't stack. For example, placing three rugs won't stack. Most furniture increases the comfort by one, but as you progress further into the game, unlocking of items can increase this value by three. Okay, so I reckon now we talk about food. Now, you'll be glad to know that food doesn't spoil. Tip 15, once you've set up the fire, I do recommend setting up several cooking stations over the fire. Each one will hold two meat and it will allow you to cook meat quicker. Okay, so each food item will raise both health and stamina by the amount shown and for the length of time shown. However, just bear in mind that each food consumed will slowly decay over time and it'll drop your health and stamina back to its original value. As the duration of the food runs out, so will the effect and it will become more rapid as it nears the end. Now you should also note that you can't consume two foods of the same type at the same time. You're only able to consume the same food when the current one is coming to an end and it's flashing on the screen. This will then be replaced by the new one that you eat. The other types of food that you'll get in the first few days of Valheim are boar meat, deer meat and honey. Now honey can be acquired from beehives that you'll find in small abandoned buildings. These structures usually do spawn near where to where you started and you can find them all around the meadows by home. To get the honey from the beehive, you just need to destroy it. You can shoot it with a bow, which is the, probably the quickest method. Hack it with an axe, but you'll take damage and possibly die. Tip 16, now the best method early on is to build a workbench near them. You can then destroy the structure with the hammer until it falls and breaks. This will then give you honey and a queen bee. And then you've unlocked the beehive. Tip 17. You can quickly build up a beehive farm. All you've got to do, search for these abandoned buildings and get enough queen bees. Okay, so one of the most important factors with working out what food to eat is looking at these fork symbols. Now, you've got red, yellow and white forks with each food. The red denotes health-based foods, the yellow denotes stamina-based foods, and the white one is equal, so both health and stamina. Tip 18, now the combination of foods you should consume depends on what you're doing. So in the first days of your adventure, eating the combination of perhaps raspberries and mushrooms and honey will push your stamina. However, the grilled neck, cooked boar and cooked deer, they're a good combination for health. A balanced combo maybe would be cooked boar, cooked deer and honey. Now cooking the food for too long will give you coal which will need further in the game, so store it. Okay, so now if you've been watching the video, it's time to upgrade. Now there are two key items required for this. One is flint and two is deer hide. Okay, so with flint, it is really easy to find. You can find it along coastlines, along streams and it is relatively easy to identify is just like a smooth type rock and this will unlock the chopping block so now if you haven't already you need to craft a bow and some arrows now the bow requires leather scraps and that's obtained from killing the boars now once you've got a bow you can go and get those deers tip 19 okay so killing deers can actually be quite painful they can get easily scared and they can actually smell you if you're downwind so what I recommend, keep your distance and shoot them from afar. All you need to make sure is that you aim high and you can get off a couple of shots without spooking them. As soon as you get the deer hide and flint, you can craft the chopping block and the tanning rack. And these are your workbench upgrades. So these workbench upgrades will do two things. One, they'll unlock other items. And two, it'll allow you to upgrade your items even further. So all we need to do for this is we just need to make sure we build them two meters from the workbench. Once placed, it opens up various new items and these include the leather armor. Okay, so now the question is, how do we upgrade? So as you can see, the star on the right with the number indicates the upgrade level. So with each workbench upgrade placed, it will then increase the level rating by one. Now unfortunately placing duplicate upgrades of the same do not stack or have any effect. Okay now for exploration. So tip 20. As you explore further it's always a good idea to find the coastline and then follow around it. This gives you an idea of the size of the island that you're on and then you can work inwards. Tip 21. 
The island you spawned at will typically consist of three biomes, one being the meadows, two the black forest and three the mountains. Sometimes you can stumble into these without even knowing, so always make sure that you look at the minimap and you'll be able to see the name of the biome there. Tip 22. If you see pine trees then, I would recommend turning back. This is a black forest and it's probably not the biome that you want to be in. Tip 23. If you see snowy mountains, don't be tempted to venture. You could die easily from the enemies within and particularly at night. Tip 24. Now instead of travelling on foot, I would consider crafting and using a raft to sail around the island. This is going to give you a good indication of what biomes are were. Tip 25. So swimming uses stamina. As the stamina reaches zero, you will then start to take damage over time and you will easily drown. So before going in the water, do look at your stamina. Tip 26. Whilst in the water, you can jump on the raft. So you need to learn to know where your ladder is and this way you can climb up without drowning. Tip 27. Establish if you're sailing against the wind which is the arrow in the minimap. Now, if you are, I recommend going into one speed and raising the sail. It's going to be much quicker. Tip 28. Jumping off the raft will stop it immediately. Tip 29. Search old buildings for chests. These can be easily missed when they are hidden, but will often contain goodies. Tip 30. So when cutting down trees, you will sometimes get feathers. However, shooting seagulls with a bow is a much faster way to get feathers. So, with a fully upgraded level 3 armour and weapons, are you ready to fight the first boss? Too right you are, go get it.